This summer, Salisbury Museum will be applying to the National Lottery Heritage Fund for a grant of £3.2 million. This is part of a £4.4 million project, which is about the redevelopment of Salisbury Museum. The project is threefold. The first is about creating new galleries to the same standards as the Wessex Gallery that we opened in 2014. The galleries on this side of the building where I'm standing are really tired and really old. Some of them date back to the 1980s and we need to upgrade them and make them suitable for modern audiences. This gallery in particular, the Salisbury Gallery, will be redisplayed to tell the story of the city from 1220, when we move from Old Sound to New Sound, all the way through to the present day. But there will also be galleries dedicated to ceramics on the first floor and also natural history also on the first floor. The second part of the project is about the conservation of this building where we're standing. It is a Grade 1 listed medieval building and we need to spend huge amounts of money on its conservation so we can continue to live in this building for generations to come. The third strand of the project is about our relationship with the local community. We need to redefine that relationship through a new activity programme that will reach out to all different sectors of the community. It will be transformational, the work that we will do, which will enable the museum also to be sustainable into the future. Now, the one thing I want to draw your attention to here is actually the collection over on my right-hand side. This is the drainage collection. This is the founding collection of the museum. It was uncovered in the 19th century by workmen who, in fact, were putting in modern sewers in Salisbury. Up until that day, the city used to have open drainage channels running through the streets. They dated right back to the medieval period. And what happened was that these drainage channels actually ended up polluting the city, so they needed to be removed. But when they were filled in, lots of artefacts were uncovered, dating right back to the medieval period. As you can see, they range from keys, as you can see over here, with the buckles in the middle, knives, and also badges as well. They provide an incredible snapshot of daily life in the city. These are things that everyday people have accidentally lost. Well, back in the 19th century, the importance of this collection was recognised. The workmen who did the, the, the construction of the sewers kept these objects, kept them safe. But a group of local gentlemen decided to save them for the city. They set up a fund called a Relic Fund to purchase these objects from the workmen. And then they founded the museum in 1860, which then opened in 1861 with these objects as the principal focus of the displays. So what we want to do as part of this project is redisplay this collection because not only do we have this stuff here that's been displayed pretty much like this since the 1980s, we've also got a lot more material upstairs in storage. So we want to bring that out and tell all the stories that these objects can tell about the lives of the people who lived in this city right back in the 13th century all the way through to the Victorian age. So let's go and have a look at some of the stuff that we've got upstairs. So this is our metalwork store where we keep the remainder of the drainage collection. So this cabinet in front of me here is packed full of more artefacts from the collection. Lovely old cabinet which must have come from the old museum which when we used to be in St Anne Street in Salisbury. I'm just struggle to get these plastic gloves on. So all of them are labelled with the different categories of object that are in there. So for example, these drawers here have spoons in. As you can see there. A bit further down we have spurs. Knives. Iron, some actually with bone and wooden handles survive the waterlogged conditions. And over here, one of the most ubiquitous objects in the collection is the key. I mean, there must have been lots of frustrated people in Salisbury in medieval times who couldn't get into caskets, boxes, and indeed, perhaps even their houses. But the most amazing survivals are actually in this cabinet here. We've got a lot of pilgrim badges. Now these are objects made from pewter, which is a mixture of lead and tin and in normal burial conditions this material deteriorates but the waterlogged conditions meant these objects survived so here there are many many of these items which were bought as souvenirs from religious shrines both across Britain but also across Europe one of the most outstanding has to be 
this one here. You can see it's a mother and child. It's, it's Mary and the baby Jesus sitting down. But this came from Tombolane, which is an island off the coast of Brittany. And it's near Mont Saint Michel. So this was an object bought in the 15th century, over 500 years ago, as a souvenir of a, of a visit to that shrine, and brought back to this country. And it was lost, I think, in the River Avon. This, in fact, wasn't found in the 19th century, this one. This was found by metal detectorists working alongside the river during building works in the 1980s. But it's part of this, part of this incredible collection. In fact, on the back there, you can see the pin still survives all cast as one piece. Unbelievably fragile. It's amazing that it survived so long. This one here is um, a very famous shrine at Canterbury dedicated to St Thomas Becket and this is one of his head from the shrine. You can see there he's got his mitred cap and then part of his face there. It dates back to the 14th century. A quite amusing one is up here. This is um, St. Werbra, who had a shrine at Chester. And you can just about see there, there are a group of geese in a fenced enclosure. And this apparently relates to a legend that St. Werbra discovered some geese eating her corn and destroying her corn. So she fenced them in and kept them overnight and then reprimanded them the next day and apparently they apologised. Well, when they went, they were sent on their way once they apologised, but one of them had gone missing. And what happened was it had been eaten. So what she did was that she brought that goose back to life so it could be reunited with its friends and family. This over here is an ampulla. This is a holy water container shaped as a scallop shell so the water would have gone in there and you could then suspend it or wear it around your neck or hang it in your house so this is blessed water so you would buy this at a shrine and take it back to your house hang it in your house for good luck possibly sprinkle the contents on your field perhaps to encourage the crops to grow in the summer so a multitude of different uses but these were a very very common device used for storing blessed water But my favourite badge by far has to be this one down here. This is a secular badge, not a religious badge, um, but it's quite rude. This is a, a monkey or some form of creature. There's a lot of debate about this, actually. You can see there he's got a cap on his head and he's holding a, a pestle and mortar. He's mixing like a medicine, but he's also peeing into it as well. He's standing on a fish. And what this badge is thought to represent is the kind of the quackery, if you like, of the medical profession in the medieval period. The idea that medicine wasn't very advanced and people often were made more poorly by the work that medical doctors did at the time. So the idea that a, a doctor would make a medicine and he would pee into it, would pollute it, was something perhaps that people believed. It was a bit of a joke. It was a medieval joke. But the fact he's standing on a fish may suggest that this was a, a slippery profession that the doctors followed at the time, the physicians followed at the time. You have to remember these badges that when they were new these were silver in colour, not this sort of grotty grey colour, and that they would have gleamed and when people wore them they would have really stood out. So we have those badges there. We also have some quite dramatic items that really deserve to be on display. I'm very careful with this drawer here. So we've got weaponry, but my eye is always drawn to this one here. It's lovely copper alloy dagger, quillen dagger, and it has a Latin inscription on it and a date you can see there of 1632. But the Latin inscription says, Virtus post funera vivit, which means virtue outlives death. Very appropriate motto for a dagger. But then also on here, it says, fear God, honour your king written along there and in fact you can see just there it looks like you have the head of the king which of course would have been Charles the first at this time in the 17th century. We also have the scabbard for it here 
And this is made from leather, which is another material that survives in these waterlogged conditions. In fact, it's quite unusual more objects like this weren't found made of organic materials, because the waterlogged conditions would have favoured the survival of material that would normally rot away like this. So I think you can see from this, just short snapshot, that the Drainage Collection is an amazing collection and more of it deserves to be on display. So if you'd like to find out more about our project, which we've called Pass Forward, Salisbury Museum for Future Generations, look online where you'll find more details about the plans and what we're hoping to do in the next couple of years.